So thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm humbled and honored to be here and to be part of this community that <clears throat> you and several other people started, I think, about seven years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Eight years ago, yeah. Eight years ago. Okay. And uh, to define synchronicity, that's how I found you guys. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story first, how I got to you, and then I'll give you the definition of it, but it'll be quite evident. So I was attending a, uh, a workshop in the Catskill Mountains, not too far from Stone Ridge, the week before I met you guys. And I happened to pair off with one of your board members, Nancy Powers, and I became a dyad during this particular configuration of uh, yeah, the seminar, which had nothing to do with holistic health. And um, she asked me, she said, uh, how do you want to spend your future, Ken? It sounds like you're coming to the, the end of your career. I've had a 45-year career career in, uh, in family practice. And I said, well, you know, I really want to work with, with other healers. I have a real mm -hmm. desire and yearning to want to be in the presence of all types of healers and do healing workshops of the commonality of all healing modalities. She smiles at me. She says, well, you know, I belong to this group in Stone Ridge. Why don't you come up next week? We have a, uh, a holistic healing day for the public and you can meet some of the people. So I said, great. So I got in my car and I live a couple of hours away, but I was motivated to, to drive upstate. And lo and behold, the first person I meet who's the greeter is someone I knew from 40 years ago, 30 years ago, the very own Donna Cohn. I didn't know her as Donna Cohn at the time. She had a different name. <laughs> and, and when I saw her and we looked at each other, we both immediately remembered being connected to another healing group many years prior in Long Island. She says, well, why don't I take you and, and introduce you to uh, one of our board of directors people, which happened to be you, Cornelia. And I remember meeting you and I remember just, I was in awe. What I was witnessing was, was a bubble of love between the practitioners and the clients. And I, 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 was, I was almost moved to tears. And I remember walking over to you and I'm, I said almost verbatim, does anybody else know what's going on here? And I remember you very, very humbly said, well, it's just a local, a local community outreach event. And I remember saying to you, well, soon the whole world's going to know. And you looked at me and said, why? I said, because you guys are going to make a movie. And you took the ball and you ran with it. And if any of you on this program have, ne have not seen the movie that's now going into film festivals and winning awards, it's because of Cornelia and, and her team. But she was the main focus. So synchronicity, when two, two eight causal events come together and you don't immediately see the connection, I didn't know going to the Catskill Mountains that I was gonna meet Nancy, who was gonna introduce me to this group, which is exactly what I was looking for. So the universe arranged all the details from the, from the field of infinite possibilities and actually attracted and brought to me exactly what I was looking for. So synchronicity is a continuous flow of events without any manipulation. And you begin to see the interconnection, how the dots are connected. I always like to think of them as the breadcrumbs. You know the fairy tale story? How did she find her way home? She picked up the breadcrumbs. It, it's Hansel and Gretel. I think that's it. So, so in many ways, you have to pay attention, stay awake, aware, and alert. The signs and the symbols are everywhere present. The term was originally coined by Carl Jung, the famous Swiss psychiatrist who lived at the time of Freud. And he, he believed that we were all connected in the collective unconscious. And so and when synchronistic events happen, it's, it's connecting the, the various energy and frequencies at the right time, at the right place with the right people. And so uh, everyone on this Zoom call has had more than one synchronicity in your life. Because every time I meet someone and tell them a story, they say, hey, Doc, can I tell you mine? Maybe you'll have opportunity at the end of the, of the program tonight to share one or two of your wows. But synchronicity is ubiquitous. It's happening all the time to everyone, everywhere. Thank you. Well, given that, are there different types of synchronicities, Karen? Yes. I came to discover that there are seven distinct types of synchronicities. They're all not the same types of coincidences. By the way, there really are no coincidences. This idea of randomness, mathematical probability, not true. 
there are two ways you can actually uh, experience synchronicity. One of them is you can create them yourself. And I'll talk a little bit about how that happens, but there are seven types. Let me read to you the subtitles of the seven different types of synchronicities. There's some synchronicities that are referred to as precursor. Now a precursor synchronicity usually shows up in your life when you're having trouble or some distressing time and you need to make a decision. And all of a sudden, someone or something's gonna come across your path and you're gonna, I got it. And you're gonna go down this road instead of going down that road. So you get a precursor uh, omen, you might say. Some synchronicities happen because you deviate from your natural routine. You know, we, we're teachers of habit. But every once in a while, we'll take a different way home or we'll go to a different store that we don't normally go into. And if we stay aware, awake and alert, we're gonna run into someone or something that's gonna have a message for us. Some synchronicities are when we're at a point of expansion in our life and we'll meet the right person who will actually help in our career, let's say, and help us get the job we've been looking for. Or the romantic, the romantic types of synchronicities. I'm gonna do a whole book called Synchronicities, How I Met My Spouse. Those are some of the greatest stories of how people actually meet each other in the life path. They meet, they disconnect, and they re-meet again. There's, a, there's a, something called manifestation synchronicity. Well, actually, you can create them. And the way you do that is you hold a very strong intention of something you desire, some dream or goal you have. And if you can elevate an emotion to that intention, you create what we call an electromagnetic field. Every thought we have is electrical in nature. Every emotion we have is magnetic in nature. So if you link a thought with an emotion, you're actually creating a Wi-Fi. You know how it goes out into the consciousness from the 3D to the 5D reality. And you'll draw from the field of infinite possibilities all the people's places, circumstances that you need to manifest that. So there are opportunity synchronicities, uh, the message synchronicity. So there's a, a wide range. And by the way, just so you know, everything I'm telling you, you don't have to take notes. Because if you go on my website and give me your email address and your name, you get a five page free pamphlet all about the 765 formula for synchronicity. How to, the, the user friendly guide, how to categorize and understand them. So we talk about the seven types in this. We talk about the six reasons we meet people. We talk about the five questions we need to ask ourselves for interpretation. And we discuss the four practices you can do to ensure to have more of those synchronicity events in your life. So. Great, thank you. Um, uh, I've heard you tell some amazing stories of the synchronicities that have happened in your life. And I wonder if you could share some of like the most notable ones with, with us tonight. That's, that's like asking me my favorite food. <laughs> I got more than one. But I'll tell you the one that pushed me over the top that made me write the book. Okay. And, and, and I couldn't deny it anymore. I've been having it my whole life. You know, and I was aware over a 20 year time period, but some were big wows, big ahas, and others were just coincident. What we'd say is coincidence, didn't have really a lot of impact. But the first story in my book is the one I'm gonna tell you tonight. And this is the one that I finally overcame my resistance to writing the book. I had resistance because I said to myself, so I'm gonna write a book about all the famous people I met and how I, I met this person and did that thing, who cares? Who cares about my stories? And then I heard the intuitive voice, hey, dummy, it's not about you. It's about you to remind people they're having them themselves. And they're not walking on this planet alone, that we're here to guide you. Because many synchronicities are divinely graced. They're given to us. This, I believe, what I'm going to tell you now is one of them. So my wife, Judy, and I were in Long Island, a little island called Shelter Island. For those of you in New York, you might know where that is. It's the end of the Long Island between the North and the South Fork. There are no waves in so Shelter Island. It's, it's in the bay. But Judy said, I want to go down to the Hampton Beach and let's go do some body surfing. So I said, fine. So we got on a ferry. You got to get on a ferry. We went into the town of Sag Harbor, which is in the Hamptons. And Dum Dum here, when the road bifurcated, not Dum Dum, I made the wrong turn, it wasn't the wrong turn. And I wound up in another town called Amagansett. Now Judy wanted to go to East Hampton. Anybody who knows the, the Hampton scene down there, it would take me three hours to backtrack to get to the other beach. 
So being practical, I said, hey, Judy, we used to rent the house on this street. The water's the same, the sand's the same. Let's make the best of this mistake. Because she was a little upset with me initially. Then I, I went this way instead of that way. Anyway, it's Camp Harris time. We got two umbrellas, two chairs. We got ocean view. No one's on the beach. It's 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. About a half hour later, some guy comes walking down the beach on a cane in a limp position, in what we call in chiropractic an antalgic posture, bent over. And he sits down almost in my lap. He's like less than two feet away from me, obstructing my view of the ocean. <laughs> and my first flush was, hey, buddy. I didn't say it to him. This is a big beach. Maybe you could move over. You know, I mean, you have to sit right here. But I didn't say it. The voice of my soul said, see if you can help this guy. So I said, hey, buddy, let me help you. I see you're having the trouble. You, you had your hip replaced or you had a back operation. So how do you know? I said, well, I'm a chiropractor. And, you know, I, I, can, I can see by the way you're walking, you're having trouble. So I'll do it myself. Was not very friendly. Sits down. About a half hour later, he goes to get back up. Again, the voice of the soul says, how can I help? So I try to help him get up. He gets up. He puts on a cap. It says New York Yankees. Ah, New York Yankees. Here's the backstory. When I was 14 years old, I hit a home run in Yankee Stadium. Now, people who are Yankee fans, when they hear that story, some of them will cry. I mean, that's pretty cool. 14-year-old kid hits a home run. And, of course, I always tell them there was an auxiliary fence. It wasn't 295 down the right field. It was about 200 feet. But this is a, this was my 15 seconds of fame when I hit that home run. I tell this guy the story thinking he's going to be elated and joyed, and he goes like this, puts his hand in my face. He says, stop. I said, oh, boy, maybe he's really a Boston Red Sox guy. And he's just wearing Yankee. <laughs> he was not that enamored. And then he says to me, I know that's a true story. Because it sounds pretty fantastic. You tell someone you're in a home run in Yankee Stadium. He says, uh, I'm Richie. I was on your team. I hadn't seen him in 54 years. I didn't recognize him. He didn't recognize me. He said, but I never forgot that story, Ken. That's a pretty unique story. So we, be, I, we were high-fiving. We were hugging. I mean, I was like out of my box. I was so excited. We had a reunion with the coach. Uh, eight of the 19 members were still alive. The coach was 90 years old. I met some of my old buddies as a result of that synchronicity. I said, hey, Richie, what made you come to the beach today? He says, I don't know. He says, I was on my way to Montauk, Long Island. <laughs> All of a sudden, my car's going down Atlantic Avenue. He says, I used to rent a house here. I said, Richie, so did I for many years, but I never met him before. So here's the deal. I make a wrong turn, I think. He doesn't know why the car's going down there, but I wound up helping him as a chiropractor. So the universe graced us to make or arrange that meeting. And when that happened, I just got really excited. I said, okay, time to write the book. So that put me, that gave me the courage to overcome my resistance to telling the stories about meeting famous people. Because Richie wasn't a famous guy. And I said to him, I said, Richie, I was going to ask you to move. You know what he said to me? Good thing you didn't. I said, why? He says, because if you did that, I wouldn't have even spoken to you. And I would have never known who he was. So that, that's one story. But I have other stories, but that, that's enough for now. I was going to ask you to, to tell us another specific story. Is that all right? <laughs> if you want, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one that's a little more serious. That, that well, was a few, few I was going to ask story. you if you could share with us, because it blew me away when you told me the story, the story of your near-death experience in this past year and the synchronicities around that. Okay. All right. So um, Judy and I were in California in January. We were visiting my son in Southern California. Uh, uh, we were staying uh, in a condo in Carlsbad at the La Costa Spa, which is a beautiful, I go there because I used to be involved with Deepak Chopra and that's where he had his, his uh, center for well-being. And uh, I said to Judy, let's take a walk on the beach, which is about maybe a 20 minute drive from that center. So we went to the Carlsbad Beach, we're walking, and all of a sudden, I, I, I don't feel quite right. And I said, Judy, you know, maybe my blood sugar is low, but let's go back because I just don't feel well. I, I couldn't even put my finger on it, but I just had this sense of not feeling good. So we go back to the condo, which is another 10-minute drive, a 15-minute drive. I take the first bite of the food she prepared, and I break out in a cold sweat, 
I don't know what, I don't know women, and I understand women in menopause have these sweats, but this sweat was like something I never experienced. And then I had the most God awful pain in my chest, right through my back. And I knew I was having a heart attack. I, I couldn't breathe. And as I'm ready to pass out, I look at Judy and I say, the only words I could get out was nine, one, one. She did it. As fate would have it, the first responders were literally down the block from the condo. They could have walked to my house. They got there within under two minutes. And within 30 seconds, they knew I was in the middle of a myocardial infarct. So the guy, the young guy said, let's get him ASAP to the closest hospital. We don't have a lot of time. I remember him saying that. The closest hospital was, was on what we call divert. They weren't taking any more clients. So they said, okay, let's roll and go north. Let's take them to the city hospital. The first hospital was a very famous one, the Scripps Medical Center. It's got quite a reputation in Southern California. But they weren't receiving patients. So the young men, there's five of them now. Two, two, um, three firemen who were EMTs and two, uh, two paramedics who were, were expert at what they did. They, they started treating me immediately on the spot with an IV and telling me to me into the hospital. As we go north on the highway, guess what happens? Traffic accident, dead stop. They look at each other and the, the guys in the back tell the guy in the front, go on the other side of the highway. We don't have enough time. They crossed the divide of the highway. They went north on the south side to get me into this hospital. When I got rolled into the hospital, now this is a city hospital, didn't have the greatest reputation, but as fate would have it, it had the highest rating cardiac interventional team in all of California for stents. A little Indian doctor from New York who trained 20 years in Manhattan, and they had a team of 15 people you talk about humble. You know what the first thing they do, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a heart attack and you go to the emergency room in that state? They rip your clothes off. <laughs> you talk about humility. So they rip my clothes off and they start sticking me. And there's one little uh, Filipino doctor and he's, he's the ringmaster. He's calling the shots. Do this, do that. It's, it's a whole, it's like Grey's Anatomy. I'm watching this. I came out of my body and I'm watching what's going on. I said, holy Jesus couldn't believe it. It was like watching, watching a TV program. The nurse who received me off the gurney leans into me, the first person I contact, and she whispers in my ear, I was still semi-conscious, we got your back, we're going to take care of you. And then I hear a voice, and I asked her later on, was that your voice? She says, no, I never said that, Ken. I hear the voice of my own soul, and it says, Ken, relax. You're not going to die today. I went into an altered state of total surrender. It was okay if I died. I was at that point where it was just fine. If I should go, I go. But I'm glad I got some extra innings uh, and a reprieve from sudden death so I could go around. I did ask the spirit world. I said, hey, guys, I just wrote a bestseller. Why don't you go let me go around and yap about it a little bit? I, don't, I wasn't ready to go home totally, but I was okay if I should. Anyway, they do their magic. Within a half hour, the stents are in and the pain stops. The next day, the nurse comes up to my ICU unit, and she says, you're not going to believe this, Ken. She said, we're on a, we're what we call a uh, on-demand team. We stand there, and we wait for the next call. But five minutes before you came in, they telemeted you in. I said to my fellow nurse standing next to me, isn't it funny? People from the East Coast, me, come out to the West Coast in the wintertime. They want to get away from the snow and the ice and the rain, and they want to take a walk on the beach in Southern California, get some sunshine, and wind up having heart attacks. <laughs> that was me. She had a precursor synchronicity that I was coming. She intuited it. Anyway, I gave her a copy of my book. She came back the following day. I only stayed uh, overnight. And she says, you're not going to believe this, Ken, but I had a, a personal tragedy in my family. I lost my husband and my son in a traumatic injury accident. And uh, I haven't slept through the night in four years, but I, I stayed up last night and read your book and I had the best night's sleep I've had in the last four years. So her and I had some kind of soul contract for sure that we had to meet in California and not have the heart attack in New York. Now the little doctor said to me, hey, listen, 
you're one very lucky man, Dr. Kenny. I know you like Deepak Chopra, and you don't want to have to take this medicine, but you're going to have to take two drugs for one year, otherwise you're going to have another heart attack. But what saved you, she says, your age. I said, what do you mean? She says, well, you're in your mid-70s. I said, yes. She said, because of your age, you have what we call collateral circulation. Even though your artery was 100% blocked, you should have died on the spot. You had little tributaries, which kept your heart muscle alive. If this happened to a younger man in their 40, 50, or 60 years, they would have died on the spot, she told me. So all those little things had to be perfectly, the perfect storm in the right way for my life to be spared. And I really believe, I, I really believe it was spared by divine intervention. I was sent to the right hospital, the right doctor, the right nurse, and here I am, yipping and yapping. <laughs> Glad you're here. <laughs> so those are huge stories, dramatic stories. What about um, just in the, your day-to-day -day life? Just synchronicities that might ar arise any day in, in smaller ways. Yeah, yeah, they don't have to be dramatic. They don't have to be life-changing. But, you know, you, you, let's say you're, you're going to go somewhere and you start concepting, I, I'm going to get a parking space right in front of the store I need to be going into. And all of a sudden you pull into the, into the driveway and someone's pulling out and you pull in. Or you think about something. Uh, I've had the experience of thinking about uh, being in a bookstore and thinking of a book and a book falls on the floor in front of me. That's crazy. It just falls. <laughs> I said, okay, guys, thank you very much. So there's, there's myriad ways that synchronicities happen. They don't have to be all life-changing and dramatic. Uh, I just say pay attention, stay aware, and stay awake. And, and you'll be provided with the... With signs and symbols, follow the breadcrumbs, folks. Listen, listen to what you're being guided to do, and sometimes what you're being guided not to do. You know, from the person who pumps your gas at the service station to the uh, person uh, at the supermarket checking you out. My attitude is: everyone is a student and teacher to each other. We're all here to learn from each other. There's an exchange of energy in every interaction, and never to judge people by their status in life certainly by the color of their skin or their economic status, because God, whatever that means to you, in my opinion, is in drag, speaking to you all the time through other people. So what are some of the reasons that we meet certain people at different points in our lives? Seemingly well, there, are, there, are, yeah. there are six reasons that you, people are gonna show up in your life. Sometimes you're going to meet someone that's going to remind you of something that you forgot. They're going to, they're going to bring something to your awareness that you put on the back burner and all of a sudden, you're going to, now I remember. Sometimes you're going to meet people that are going to encourage you. They're going to be your cheerleaders and, and, and inspire you to keep moving in your path. Sometimes you're going to meet people who are going to wake you up to a whole new level of consciousness that put you on a totally different path that you never even anticipated walking down. Sometimes you're gonna meet people who are just gonna hold space for you. By holding space, they're just gonna, they're gonna be uh, in the surround and, and, and offer healing for you. And sometimes you're gonna meet people you're gonna stay with forever, like your husband or your wife. You know, you're gonna, be, you're gonna become what they call the earth and the moon. You're gonna orbit each other for the rest of your time on the planet. So there's different reasons for certain ones showing up at different times. Those are just some of them. To grow, to wear, to awaken you, to remind you, to support you. Right. So I've had experiences several times in my life of somebody being introduced to a group and have feeling like a bolt of energy coming through my body. So I knew that I had to pay attention to that person. It's sort of a different sort of meeting. I would, wouldn't have paid any attention to that person if that hadn't happened. Right. Well, your body, your body will not lie to you. Your head and your heart will lie, <laughs> particularly your head. And sometimes your heart, your emotions will cloud the issue, but, but your body won't lie. You know, I, many times you're talking to people, they'll say, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps. You're telling that story. That's a good sign. You know, that, that's an affirmation. The other thing is when you hear something or meet someone and your energy field expands, you start to feel a lightness of beingness. That's usually a very good sign that there's something here for you to pay attention to. Conversely, if you go into a room and you start to feel the darkness and the contraction, that's a sign of get out of Dodge. <laughs> you don't belong there. So the body 
like you said, you had in your case, you actually had a physical bolt go through you. Pay attention to where you feel it in your body. Some people feel it in the throat chakra, some in the heart, some mm -hmm. in the uh, intestines, some in the head. It, it varies for each person, but the body will also uh, signal you when something you should pay attention to is happening for you. You know, things don't happen to us, they happen for us. We're not victims. You know, the people say, oh, I don't know why this keeps happening to me. No, no, it's happening for you to perhaps wake you up or put you on another path or remind you of something you forgot. So I think of synchronicities as a gyroscope, you know, they get you back on the path. The plane gets lost sometimes on automatic. We, most of us live on automatic pilot. We don't even give conscious thought to what's going on right in front of our own eyes. Mm -hmm. But the synchronistic events, they're kind of like, okay, you're off course. Let's get back on, this, on the path here. So pay attention. So are there certain questions you ask yourself, Ken, um, in, to interpret the meaning behind synchronicities? Yes. I think you're following the program here very good, Cornelia. In case you're wondering, these are the questions I asked her to ask me. I wanted to make sure I knew the answers. They say if you're an attorney, make sure you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. Yeah, so there are, there are five ba basic questions, and I'll read them to you that you should ask yourself when something of a synchronistic nature takes place. Could what have just happened be a precursor of what's coming to me? An omen, you might say. Or did I just do something that was very improbable that caused this to happen? Did, did I manifest this because I've been perseverating, dwelling on it, kept thinking about it 24 seven and there it is? By the way, I would caution you, be careful what you think and what you feel. The universe doesn't know it's good or bad or indifferent. It'll bring to you what you keep thinking about. Your energy goes where your attention goes. So ask yourself, did I create this? Uh, sometimes you're gonna get a divine grace that the spirit world is gonna, is gonna arrange these meetings for you as part of your life journey. I know I, I, my, spirit, my, my guides arrange for me to meet Wayne Dyer and become his chiropractor, without a doubt without a doubt, and, and recognize that we were really soul brothers in another lifetime. I mean, it was an instantaneous inner connection and knowing when he hugged me the first time, he looked down at me and he said, hey, Ken, you and I got one heart. Do you know that? And I, I knew it because I felt it. So, you know, pay attention. Sometimes there's serendipitous things that happen. We're going down one way and all of a sudden we find something we didn't know we were looking for it. But again, the spirit world arranges that for you. So those are some of the questions you ask you. Did I do something to create this? Was it given to me? Was it a deviation from my normal routine? And the number one thing you want to do to have synchronicities or more of them, talk to strangers. Because strangers are friends you haven't met yet. There are no strangers. You think that, you think that this person, you're meeting them for the first time. Maybe and maybe not. Maybe it's the first time in this lifetime. But pay attention to what people are going to say back to you and listen and write it down you know I, every time uh people say you know i had a synchronicity but i can't remember it i say keep a journal because they're happening to you i guarantee you now as a result of this zoom call tonight or if you read my book you're going to have multiple synchronicities you're going to find oh my god i didn't realize it so write it down that's a, the that's a thing you should do to increase the likelihood of having more of them. You know, it's like anything else. When you pay attention, you know, you start seeing, like I've had patients come to me in my practice here, and they say, you know, before I started on the chiropractic care here, I never saw all these other signs for chiropractors. Do you know there are 10 of them in my town? <laughs> they never saw them until they started treatment under, my, under me. So their attention went where, where their energy went. So that, those are some of the questions you can ask and some of the practices you can do. Again, you don't have to remember this. It's all, it's all in the five-page printout in detail. Well, before we open it up to questions, uh, is there any, are there any final thoughts you want to share with us, Ken? <laughs> well, uh, funny you should say that, Cornelia, <laughs> because at the end of that five page are the principles of synchronicity. I'll just share with you the final thought. There's a whole list of them here, but I won't go through them. I want to give you uh, opportunity to ask me some questions or share one of your stories but I'll lead you with the final thought in my book at the end of your life when you reflect back 
and you connect the dots, you will come to finally realize it was never random. That's the final thought I want people to know. It was never random. You've been guided and supported your whole earth journey. Well, thank you, Ken. So if anyone would like to ask a question, if you could just turn off your mute and raise your hand, we'll call on you one at a time. Michael. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I uh, get his website uh, address or whatever it, it is called, the dot something. Okay. Website. So that I'd be I happy to, uh, I'll be, I'm not shy. I'll be happy to give it to you. <laughs> okay. I couldn't get Dr. Ken Harris, D-R. I had to spell out the whole word. It's D-O-C-T-O-R, KenHarris.com. That's the website. And it, it's, a, it's a very interactive website. Uh, lots of good information on it. And uh, I, as I said, if you register, I need your name and email address, you'll get the freebies. You get that five page pamphlet, you'll get a monthly newsletter, and hopefully send me one of your stories, Michael, for future uh -huh. publication. See, that? What, how did that synchronicity arrive in your brain? I mean, how do you know that I write stories? I don't know, I just, I'm just inviting you to do so. <laughs> Well, I didn't know. <laughs> we could exchange books if you like. Oh, oh, did you write a book on synchronicity? No, not on synchronicity. Oh. You know, uh, but synchronicity is part of everything, right? So, well, I'd be happy. To, I'll send you a copy of mine. You send me a copy of yours. How's that? Right. And so, uh, at any rate, I'll start with your drkenharris.com. And uh, where are you located? In, in I assume you're in the U.S. somewhere. I'm non-local in space and time. No, I, I live in New Jersey. I live New in northern Jersey. New Jersey, a half hour outside of New York. But I travel a great deal. But but this is I've been in this uh, location for 45 years. I had a wellness, mind body wellness education center practice here, and uh, now I'm uh, now that I'm foot loose and fancy free. There until the pandemic, I had. I had many, many book signings lined up, but they've all turned into Zoom calls. But I'm going to be doing retreats and seminars. I just got hired to do them in Virginia at a, now get this, at a new retreat center. And guess what the name of the retreat center is? Synchronicity Foundation. There you they go. They found me. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I, I was laughing when I said, by the way, the lady interviewed me. I said, what's the name of your retreat center? She says, Synchronicity Foundation. We're a meditation retreat center. Yeah. Because I thought you might have been in Hawaii because Wayne Dyer was in Hawaii. On I, I traveled to take care of him back and forth. Yeah. So we have a question on, on the chat uh, list. It's um, from Gloria. And she asks, what about tragic events or unhappy experiences? I'm not sure what, 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 what that means. Is that synchronistic, that things bad happen to us? I, I'm not sure what the, the exact question is, Gloria. Gloria, why don't you unmute yourself and clarify? There, there are lots of wonderful synchronicities where people have great experiences, meet the love of their life, or, you know, something wonderful happens. What goes on when, like, in this Black Lives Matter, people are getting killed by police, uh, the Holocaust, things that just are tragic, un totally unhappy experiences. Where's, is that synchronous? I mean, are people bringing I in wouldn't classify it as synchronistically, but I'll tell you this. L let's take the World Trade Center. That was a so-called tragic accident incident. Many people were there that day that should not have been there, and many people who should have been there were not there. And there were all these things that had to happen to reshuffle the deck. Now, in the human condition, we judge, in, the, in the world of duality, we say good, bad, right, wrong, up, down, right? But oftentimes, so-called tragic events happen that turn out to have silver linings down the road and change the course and destiny of those, that person's life. The immediate loss turns out to be the greatest blessing many times years later when they look back. I've heard patients say, you know, the best thing that ever happened to me, doc, I got cancer. I said, why? She said, because I woke up. I was miserable before I had cancer. Now that I have cancer and I beat it, you know, it was when she first got the diagnosis, she was not a happy camper, but she says, now I have a, I have a full life. Now I appreciate each and every day of my life. 
Whereas before I was numb to life. So I don't have a full answer of why good things, why bad things happen to so-called good people. You know, I can't justify it. I, my bandwidth doesn't go that far. It's part of the mystery. The title of my book is The Magic, The Mystery, and The Meaning. Each person has to figure out the meaning for themselves. And as I say, sometimes what's so-called bad in the moment turns out to be a blessing later on. That's the best answer I can give you. Are there other questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> you got an opportunity. You got another 18 minutes to pick my brain, so. Hi, can I be heard? Hi, my name is Leah. Can I be heard? Yes. I don't know. You came in a little late. If, if um, you don't mind, um, you would tell me the definition of um, was in the word synchronicity. I can hear the. I couldn't hear the question, Cornelia. You know, I couldn't either. Could you repeat the question, Leah? Um, you hear me now? I hear you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now it's better. Yeah. Okay, what is the definition? The definition? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll read it from the, from the forward of the book, the technical. We, there's several definitions. There's not one, but let me give you the, uh, the classic definition uh, as defined in the book. But my, my friend who wrote the forward to me is a very well-known physician in California, and he's got the, uh, a center called the Beehive of Healing. And uh, how I met him was synchronistic. But anyway, synchronicity happens when two things having a shared purpose or function come together at the same time in order for a particular condition or outcome to be achieved. I'll read it again. Synchronicity happens when two things having a shared purpose or function come together at the same time in order for a particular condition or outcome to be achieved. That's the classical definition. But I like to think of it as the continuous flow of consciousness. There are things we call super synchronicities, one after another. You start, it's just like you're picking up the breadcrumbs and you're finding your way home. I've had, I've had those happen, these sequential ones, not just two things, but multiple things. Bam, one after another happened to you. And then you really know you're in the flow or in the zone. So did we answer your question? Uh, um, yes. So um, aren't we sometimes um, not in control of the things that's in the subconscious that we're not in control of? What's the question, though? Uh, um, no, like, no, like you said, it, it, um, the way things um, happen for a reason, but aren't, aren't there sometimes um, feeling situations that you're not in control of? It's in the subconscious. If it, Well, I'm going to give you the good and the bad news. <laughs> Control is an illusion. <laughs> you, know, the, you know why the Buddha is smiling? Because he says, hey, guys, relax. You were never in control. We're, we're not in control. You are in control of what happens or what washes up on your shoreline and how you react or respond. But what comes on your shoreline, you're not in control of. Those so-called tragic things and so the, some of the not so good things. But you always have a choice on how you're going to react or respond to the circumstance. Therein lies your power, the power of choice. But as far as controlling things, give it up. Having that heart attack taught me I wasn't in control. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard my story about the heart attack, but- Yes, I, mean, I heard. You wanna get yeah, humble? I you wanna, and I didn't see it coming. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty healthy guy, I thought. Anyway, but there was a lesson in that for me. There was a great, there's a great silver lining of having survived that experience, which I'm going to put in my next book. It's called Extra Innings, A Reprieve from Sudden Death. So there's another question, uh, Ken, on chat, and it's from KC Lauren. And the question is, what is your take on numbers that you see all the time? I always thought it was the universe telling me I'm on the right path. 
Absolutely. Animals keep showing up. Look up the symbology of the animals. If a snake crosses your path or a fox, if you keep seeing the same number, I have a friend, he kept seeing the, the number 1111. <laughs> 11, he started a whole community called Friends in the Spirit, 111. Yes, numbers, look up the numer numerology. Sometimes it'll be on a license plate, sometimes it'll be on a billboard, sometimes you'll find a dime, a nickel, a quarter. They all have different meanings. Pay attention. There is symbology to numbers and to animals that cross your path. So the answer is look it up. If it's repetitive, if it happens once, no big deal. But if it keeps happening, my mother, was the soul, she used to play the Irish sweepstakes. She loved the number 303 because there was a road in New York that we used to drive up to the mountains on 303, Route 303. Well, she hit the Irish sweepstakes with that number. She played it every week. We didn't win a lot of money. But that was, that was the sign for her that she should play that number. <laughs> so there's another question from Laura Parati. It's, uh, she says, you mentioned that you're being guided. Whoops. Yes. Who or what is guiding you? You, you mean you want to know the names of my friends in the spirit? <laughs> it's, I believe... It, I believe we have soul, soul friends. We have soul connections. Now, I have met two of my, my guides. I mean, physically, I met them. Uh, so my particular two were from the, uh, the lost continent of Lemuria. And they revealed themselves to me. And I became, for a time period, I was clairaudient, clairsentient, and clairvoyant. And then uh, I went into a fear state. When they show up, let me tell you, it can rock you. <laughs> when you have apparitions and, and beings appear to you, it, you got to be grounded. And I went into a little bit of a fear uh, state, and unfortunately, they will not stick around if you're in fear. So they, they left. But I know I'm being guided now because it's mostly through intuition. I, 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 my body will tell me or I'll get a, a flash, an innate flash thought, and I know that spirit speaking to me. Now, it could be my own soul speaking to me, or it could be some friends of my soul. We have, we, we're not here alone, folks. That much I can guarantee you. You're not walking on this planet isolated. And if you want to know more about your guides, you meditate. Ask them to show themselves to you. Don't be afraid if they should show up because they won't stick around if they do. But that's been my experience. Unless you have that experience, this sounds like woo-woo and, you know, he made it up. But that was my experience. Um, Jackie asks if the book will ever become an audio book. Yes, synchronistically. I just sent it to a, uh, a sound engineer last week. So I am going to, for the millennials, I'm told the millennials don't read books. <laughs> they listen. They don't have the attention span. Now, I, I'm going to put it on audio in the fall. It'll be available in the fall. You can listen. And the great thing about my book, is that each story is complete in and of itself. It's not a long story, there's two, three, four pages. You don't have to remember what happened in the last story because it's a whole new story. And so it makes for, you can pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. However, I will caution you, many people have told me they picked it up and they read it from beginning to end. It, it, it sucked them in in such a, like what happened next to this guy? Because <laughs> some of the stories are really, they're off the charts. But. I, I'll put my hand on a Bible or a holy book. It all happened to me. My wife was there for most of them. And she'll, she'll swear with me. I didn't make anything up. You couldn't make this stuff up. Believe me. <laughs> my imagination's not that good. So, yes, audio in the fall. John? John, did you want to ask a question? I thought his hand was up. Yes, not any other questions? Anybody got a great story they want to tell? An aha moment of synchronicity in your own life? What was that? I don't know. It sounded like the haunted house to me. I have a question, Ken. Um, in my life, there have been very obvious synchronicities where I've known almost instantly that a synchronicity was happening. 
similar to stories he told. John, you want to switch your phone off there, John? I think it's John's. Uh, yeah. He's, we got started from John. John, could you put yourself on mute? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. There's that laugh. Let's, let's see if I can do it. Yeah, I think you can. Mute all. <coughs> okay. I think that did it. Um, so my question is, sometimes in my experience, I've known immediately that a synchronicity was happening and my jaw drops open. Um, other times, as similar to what one, one of the questioners, I, I forget who said it, uh, maybe it was Gloria, um, I'm not sure. Um, I've realized maybe a year or two later how synchronistic a certain activity was that I wasn't aware of at the time. Are they both equally synchronicities, whether we're aware of it in the moment or not? <clears throat> you're, you're muted, Ken. Ken? Yeah, they're both synchronistic. Some are more obvious in the moment. You get a, you get a hit, you get a light, you get a feeling, and others in retrospect, when you think back, you say, oh, it becomes clear as a bell. That's why I lost that job because I needed to meet my husband at the next job, that kind of a thing. So yes, the retrospection, you connect the dots. They're both equally important, but some are more obviously impacting than others. It depends on wh where your spirit's trying to guide you in that moment, which road you're trying to go down, you know? So yes, they're, they're, I, I consider them both synchronistic even though one is in the moment and one is in retrospect. Right. Are there other questions? John, I think is turned off his mute again. Do you want to ask a question, John? John? I don't know what's happening there. Hey, Cornelia. Yes. So my daughter, Nicola, wants me to tell a story. Do you want to come with me, honey? Um, <laughs> so what you were saying about the World Trade Center, um, as devastating as that was, I was uh, living in New York City at the time. I was working in film production. And I had, oh, I know the story. And I had just registered for the Barbara Brennan School. And I didn't really have any money um, to do this. And I thought, oh, well, I'll figure it out somehow. But then the World Trade Center collapsed um, right before I was about to start, although I had registered. And I thought, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I, I, was, I wasn't, um, there, there was no more film production work in the city. But then I saw this guy driving a pedicab, you know, the, the bicycle taxis in New York City. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Maybe I could do that and make some money. So I figured out how to, you know, get, get myself some training. And, and I started riding these bike taxis. And I'm 5'1", I'm tiny, but I was strong and I did it. And I met my husband um, doing that, which was uh, amazing. And he loves to tell that story. <sighs> and, and then another story is that, you know, eventually we got married, had a, had a baby girl who's now a big girl. And um, we... Uh, Gosh, Wait, what, is this the one? No, that's not me. Okay, so um, so I I was working full time, and a lot of people I worked with were be, were going were moving out of New York City, and and we were able to work remotely, which was amazing. And I actually was told I could work remotely after Nicola was born, even though I was only commuting from Queens to Manhattan, which was incredible. I did that for about a year, and then they said you have to come in again, and they weren't going to let me work remotely again and we were looking for a house and and I was totally freaked out because our plan was to buy a house we were looking really seriously and, and so I was simultaneously trying to find a job that would allow me to work remotely and I was trying to find a house and so I was working with this woman who channels who's incredible that's another story of synchronicity how I met her but um she had me working with the elementals and following the ley lines of the earth up to the place that felt like the feeling place that I had felt in my heart of where our new home was. And so it was 2013. It was like the end of the, the buyer's house, housing bubble. 
And it was November. And I thought, oh my God, the season's over. Probably next season, we're not going to be able to get houses at this great price. And then it like all came together at once. It was early November. We found this house that was, we were looking in New Paltz. Our house is in Lamontville, just outside of Stone Ridge. And, um, and so we got this house. I got a new job with, it was like the same umbrella company that I was working with, but a slightly different, um, but a, a different aspect of it. And, and they were going to let me work remotely. And it was with my old supervisor who was, had moved companies and she'd said, okay, I'm going to bring you with me. And so all of a sudden I, you know, we, we found a house. I got this job. This is all like around Thanksgiving of that year. And then, um, and so we had done the inspection. It, w it went great. We, and then the, the lending company wrote me a letter and said, hey, you know, looks like you li you're, you're moving too far away from your job to be able to commute. But, um, but you, you need to prove to us, but you, it can't be a summer home, you know, but you need to prove to us that your company is going to allow you to work remotely before we give you this loan. And I had just got, I had just started my new job like 10 days before. And it just felt so good to be able to go to my boss and say, hey, I need this signed. <laughs> and she said, oh, go to HR. And HR was the one who had just beautifully handled my move from one company to the other where I didn't even have to fill out any paperwork. They did it all my, themselves. And, I, and what we were really looking for was community. And, and we didn't even know, you know, we lived in Queens. We didn't know what that looked like. And, and you know, so the first year we were there, we found this organic CSA. And, and we were just like, wow, 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 this is it. And we found this, well, there's so much to it, but it, it was the second year we were there that we, um, that I found this group and now, uh, and I started volunteering and, and I was like, okay, now I know why, why this is where we were directed to be. I, I love it. I love it. So you met your spouse through synchronicity. You had a disappointment. Something else showed up. You found a new place to live. That was perfect. So when things calm down for you, write them up <laughs> and then in because volume two is going to be how I got a new place to live, how I found the new job. You got all three, how I got a spouse and how I got a new job. So you got all three elements I'm looking for. So when you have a chance and quiet time, start articulating it. I love it. And you can see how excited you are. I mean, yeah. you, could see, you know, your whole, your whole energy just went like, wow, you were gifted. You were gifted. And I think you had something to do with that. You were graced, but you also had intentions. You, you had dreams and wants. And I think you connected the feeling to it. And the universe said, here it is on a silver platter. Ken, thank you for giving us the space to tell our stories. It was really exciting for me to do that. I appreciate it very much. I want and you to write, you. write them, write them. Don't <laughs> just tell me, write them down. <laughs> Send them in. I'm going to be okay. looking for you. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Sorry. So Cornelia, we're at 7.59. We are. We said we were going to um, stick to one hour. I think that was the plan. So uh, speak now or forever hold your peace if anyone has a burning something they want to answer. <laughs> I just want to say thanks, but I have to go now, Ken, and I will be writing you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I'll be looking, I'll be looking to connect with you and everyone else. I mean, I want to have, I'm going to create a synchronicity community. So I'm looking to develop that uh, one synchronicity story at a time. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you all for joining us. And for those of you who tuned in late, the book is Synchronicity, the Magic, the Mystery, and the Meaning. It's a beautiful book that I've enjoyed reading very very much and um thank you for joining us thank you ken for You're very welcome all you shared with us tonight and um do join us on our website and and join us for future events and make sure you watch the movie that cornelia created about the center it's well we all created it yeah but thank you okay <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed. can i can I quickly ask what is the community? I I landed in this consciousness. Are you tuned in, Alicia? No, no, no. I've been here the whole time, but I, I guess I, I I you know what? I didn't get connected for uh, until about seven o five, so I must have missed some. Well, I 
Right. Uh, just in a couple words, it's the Holistic Health Community in Stone Ridge, New York, and we sponsored okay. Ken this evening. Are you familiar with us? Um, a new friend of mine actually just um, told me about it. Um, well, and so, visit. and gave me the link for this evening. So good. And do visit our website. It's community, it's um, holistichealthcommunity.org. And it, our film is there and um, all about us is there. Awesome. Thank you. Good. Thank Holistic you Holistichealthcommunity.org. Holistichealthcommunity.org indeed. So thank you. Thank you, and Ken. Thank you, thank you all. And good night. Thank you, Ken. Stay awake, aware, and alert. <laughs>